data analysis and contact tracing efforts. So our team is going to support ongoing COVID-19 related efforts with data analysis and dashboards to timely inform decision makers and the public about the current pandemic conditions and data trends of the overall, of the overall regional economy. We'll be looking at data trends, dashboards, heat maps, and also working on a contact tracing program. And I'll talk about, I'll talk about that more in, in a few minutes here. So this is all information that we can use in the coming weeks and months as the economy is slowly reopens in the state of Texas and we transition from phase to phase locally. So here I'm just giving you a quick review of the team members that are on this group. We have economists, a planner, GIS analysts, and also fire and health department staff, and a data scientist. So it's a pretty diverse group of folks. Here I'm also showing you the main tasks that we've already started working on, and also an example of a heat map that we created to look at mobility patterns in El Paso as new health orders are issued or amended over time. And finally, like I said, we are collaborating with the health department and fire departments on some of the work they have done with dashboards. And you saw Dr. Carranza this morning, uh, today, showing you some of those figures and images. So really good information that we, can, we now have at our disposal and for you all to see and monitor this pandemic. We're also working on contact tracing and a staffing plan that has been developed and it's been implemented over the next few weeks as they continue to improve their operations and ability to respond to this pandemic. Next slide, please. In terms of data analysis, we are tracking and using the, these data sets from both inside and outside the city. We've already set up a schedule with multiple departments within the city to do regular data downloads and update our information. So we always have the latest data available. We're also collecting data from secondary data sources from other agencies to monitor the impact that COVID-19 is having in our region and in other parts of the country. So like the city manager said this morning, we are looking at our own data to see how we can adjust our operations and make decisions locally here in El Paso. We're tracking also bridge crossings, airport activities, some metro ridership, building permits, sales, hotel taxes, uh, home sales, the El Paso business cycle, the exchange rate, among others. So there's quite a bit of information that we're tracking right now, monitoring every single week uh, as data is being released, uh, and we, we keep track of that as well. Next slide, please. So this is another example of data, data dashboards or analysis that we have uh, bridges. So here, this is the business cycle in El Paso. And in March, already in March, even though the effects of the pandemic were late in March in El Paso, at least here locally, we saw the economy contract uh, at an annualized rate of 0.48%. And so the new numbers should be released this week uh, for the month of April. So we expect that number to increase uh, in, in the next couple of days. At the bottom here, we're showing the home sales uh, decrease of 13% in April, again, a, a sharp decline just in one, in one month. Uh, again, as the economy in El Paso is impacted with this pandemic and the economy begins to, to uh, take, a, take a dive. Next slide, please. We're tracking also the exchange rate. It's one of these metrics that we track at Bridges so for sure because we, we do offer our customers uh, the ability to pay in pesos. And so we track that as well. You know, this not only impacts operations within the city, but also sales taxes. You know, once the economy reopens, fully reop reopens and the restrictions uh, being, being placed by the feds at the bridges, uh, this exchange rate, since it's so high now, it is gonna impact the ability of Mexicans to come to El Paso and purchase goods here. So it'll, it'll drive our sales taxes down as well. So it's, it's a double impact here uh, at the, uh, locally with this exchange rate uh, being so volatile that it has been in the last few weeks. Next slide. We're tracking also county mobility patterns here in El Paso. You see here visits to each of these sectors, retail, grocery, pharmacies, parks, transit stations, workplaces, residential areas. And you see that over time, as those uh, orders are amended and the Open Texas Plan uh, is implemented, we see those start to, 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 to spike and go back to pre-COVID-19 levels slowly but surely, you know, as we have gone from 25%, we'll be going to 50%, 75%. Uh, you'll see these metrics, and so we, we're tracking these as well. Next slide, please. So in terms of dashboards, we are working with Chief Red and his team over at the fire department, as well as the GIS division on tools they have developed to track the current pandemic, case activity, contact tracing, and also current PPE levels. The GIS division dashboard is based on an ArcGIS platform and is tailored for public information, whereas the fire department dashboard is based on a Power BI platform and it uses detailed case level information uh, with COVID-19 cases, and it's tailored for OEM staff to track the current pandemic. And they also developed their own dashboard to track PPE uh, equipment, you know, face shield, A95 masks, gloves, gowns, and others. 
Um, so again, these are really unique uh, tools that they have developed. And I've been, I have to say, I've been really impressed with the work that they have done in such a limited amount of time during this difficult time. So really kudos to the fire department and GIS team with, with these dashboards. Uh, next slide. More examples of the dashboards. You know, so you saw some of this information with uh, Dr. Rocanas' presentation this morning. Uh, next slide. So now on to contact tracing. Next slide, please. So contact tracing is conducted as an effort to determine possible spread of the infection and to implement measures to stop the spread of COVID-19. So here on the right, I'm showing you a very simplistic view of the complex contact tracing process that, have been, that is being followed with each person that is, um, is interviewed. We'll be working with the fire department and health department uh, on a process mapping exercise to expand on this and then also find areas of opportunity. So throughout this process, the level of risk is assigned to each individual and guidance is given to them on what steps they need to take, whether it is to just monitor their health if they're low risk, or if they have to quarantine or even isolate themselves in their homes to a, to a confined bedroom if they test positive. Next slide. So I mentioned a staffing plan. Before I get into that, right now, as it stands today, the contact tracing team is 154 strong. Now, not all these folks are active today. So as of today, there are 88 active contact tracers. These are EPIs, investigators, monitors, follow-up and triage groups. And the other 66 are in reserves. And these are folks that are with the fire department, they're nurses, medical students, and others. So right now we are not working at full capacity. So that, you know, that's, 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 a good, that's on, the, on the good news, right? Uh, we're not working at full capacity. There's capacity to expand if needed as the caseload uh, expands. But also keep in mind that these folks also track other communicable diseases year round in the county. So COVID-19 is not their only priority. They have others, uh, other, other spread or other diseases that they track. So we have to take that into account as well as we monitor their caseload and we work with them on their staffing plan. Next slide. So as I said, the staffing plan has been developed and implemented uh, to increase the staffing levels and uh, to prepare in the event of the, uh, the caseload continues to grow. The plan right now to recruit is to recruit an additional 150 contract tracers to assist in the future and in anticipation of any future waves of cases. Right now in the U.S., the recommended ratio of contact tracers per 100,000 people ranges between 11 and 30. Uh, you know, the, the, middle, the middle range is about 15 during normal times, but during times of a pandemic like today, that doubles to 30, peop, to 30 uh, contact tracers per 100,000 people. And so currently our ratio right now is 10.3, only taking into account those 88 that are active. But if we increase that to the ones that are also in reserves, that number can go up to 18. So what we're well within that, that range that is recommended in the US um, with the reserves. So the staffing plan that has been implemented now calls for the recruitment of more full-time contact tracers to increase the ratio up to 28 folks, uh, 28 folks per 100,000 people within the next six to eight weeks. So it's, it's just shy of that cap of the ideal range during a pandemic. So as you, know, as you can tell right now from just these few slides, there's a lot of planning taking place to improve the readiness of, of, of uh, you know, our staff and, and, our, and our workforce and in anticipation of any future waves we might see in El Paso. Uh, and with that, uh, that was my presentation. I'll pass it over to Sam in a second here. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Sam of the U.S. Trump State.